What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panyuta for tutorials.eu slash Android. In this video, we are going to set up our first project with Android Studio and we're going to look into the user interface of Android Studio because it is quite an extensive application with a bunch of different buttons and areas and so forth. So I would like to introduce you to those so that you're not feeling overwhelmed by all of these options that you have available. So let's get started and also hit the like button if you feel like this is going to be useful for your app development career. And also don't forget to follow the playlist that we have, which will help you to build a bunch of apps and you're going to become a real app developer. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we see here is welcome to Android Studio, which is great. And then we can create a new project to start from scratch or we can open existing projects. So if you want to open the projects that you will find as a downloadable file for the lectures that you have in the course, then you can of course click on open, but we're going to start with a new project here. So once you select that, you will find this screen here and the screen allows you to select from the different options that there are. So if you want to develop for a phone or a tablet, you would select the templates from here. So basically you have a bunch of different templates that you can use in order to get started. And the beauty about those templates is that Android Studio is going to already give you a bunch of code that you don't have to manually write. And that's really the power of using an integrated development environment such as Android Studio. So if you were to develop for the watch, you would use Wear OS or for Android TV, you would select something here and the same goes for automotive. But the course is going to focus on phone and tablet. And you see by default, the empty activity is selected. So you can see that there are different types of activities that you can select from and they will have different kinds of predefined code in them already. For example, if you want to navigate between different screens, you would use this bottom navigation activity. If you want to have this button here at the bottom right where you click onto it in order to add something, you would use this basic activity. But we're going to start with this empty activity, which is going to be pretty clean and we can just build everything from scratch. And that makes sense for you as a beginner, especially because you need to understand how things are connected and how they are built up. So it doesn't make sense for you to have this bottom navigation activity where a bunch of code is already in there and you wouldn't understand it. So I think it makes sense to start here. Of course, you can also see that there are beautiful things such as ad mob ads activity where you have ads in there or the Google Maps activity or even such a login activity, which you will definitely need in your developer's career. But let's start with this empty activity. So click next and then this screen pops up where you can create a new empty activity. You can first of all, give your application a name and I'm going to call this one my first app. Okay. And then here, the package name, it always consists of those three keywords separated by a comma. Usually that's com.example.myfirstapp. So it's like you would go to a website and it would be the other way around. So you would say something like myfirstapp.example.com. So here you need to use a package name that will be unique to your own app. Because once you want to release your application, it has to have a unique package name. Otherwise, the Android Play Store will not accept it and you cannot publish the application. So here it really makes sense to have a package name that fits you. In my case, I'm going to use eu.tutorials because my website is called tutorials.eu.myfirstapp. And you can see everything is in lower capital letters. Then the safe location is basically where your project will be stored on your PC. You can change that anytime by clicking on this button and then you can select a different folder if you want to. I'm going to leave it at that. And then you have the language here. So you can select Java or Kotlin. So this course is going to focus on Kotlin entirely because well, Google said that they want to focus on Kotlin when it comes to app development and they don't want to work with Java that much anymore. It has to do something with them running into some issues with Oracle who own Java and so forth. So I'm not going to go in too deep into that, but that's basically how they at one point decided to go with Kotlin and we're going to use the latest and greatest, which is Kotlin. Then you have the minimum SDK. 
And SDK stands for Software Development Kit, which is a collection of software development tools in one installable package. They facilitate the creation of applications by having a compiler, debugger, and even a software framework. They are normally specific to a hardware platform and operating system combination. So in this case, the SDK is specific to the Android apps that we're going to build. So here you can see that you have the API 21 with Android 5.0, which was called Lollipop. Back then, Android versions had a name that was somehow connected to a suite. You can see here Marshmallow, Nougat, Oreo, Pi, Jelly Bean. And at one point, they just called them like letters, QRS. So Android 12 is, of course, the latest version at the point of recording. But it doesn't mean that you should select Android 12. Because if you do that and you want to specifically target phones that have Android 12 installed on them, you can see that this app will only run on 1% of devices. So that's not a good idea, even though it will contain all of the good and great features that Android 12 has to offer, but it will be limited and it will only run on devices that have Android 12 installed on them. And until it is a reasonable amount of devices, years will pass. So even if we take Android 10, you can see it's only installed on 8% of devices, which is why by default, it offers you API 21, which is running on 94.1% of devices. And this is basically most people that have a phone. So if a phone uses an Android version that is older than 5.0, then probably it's not being used that much anymore. Now, the cool thing is that Google was smart enough to create things such as App Compat, which is an app compatibility namespace that basically allows us to develop new features that will run on old devices. So they've really found a smart way around it. So basically you can use Android 5.0 or the API level 21 in order to build your application and that will work flawlessly on 94.1% of devices that are out there. Now you can activate that you want to use legacy Android support libraries, which is if you really want to specifically target old devices. So I'm not going to check that box. Now let's click on finish and let Android Studio set up the project. You can see here that it says Gradle colon build and there is this progress bar, which basically just says, okay, it's preparing the project. So it's creating all of the code and all of the project files that there are. Quick pause. So you're learning something about Android in this video and I hope you enjoy it. If you want to learn everything that you need to know to become a real Android developer, then definitely check out my Android Masterclass because in this course, you're going to build a bunch of great applications along your journey to becoming an Android developer. First, you're going to learn the Kotlin basics. Then you're going to learn to build one app after another. And while you do that, you get a bunch of demos, which will really dig deep into the concepts as well as presentations, which will help you to understand what you're learning. So don't miss out and get the course right now. You can find the link in the description below. Okay. So here you can see that you have your code in the main activity KT, which is opened by default. .kt stands for Kotlin, by the way. So this is a Kotlin file and it is a physical file on your PC. So if you want to go to this particular folder, you can right click and then go to open in Explorer. This will then open up the Explorer and you can find this is the main activity KT file, which is in all of those subfolders. So there's the tutorials folder, then EU, then Java main, SRC, app, my first app, and Android Studio for projects. So this is my first app, which contains all of those folders, which this IDE, this Android Studio has automatically generated for us. And that really makes our life a lot easier. So you have this code, let's say you think that this code is too small or too big. Well, what you can do is you can go over to your settings right here, or you can press Control Alt S on Windows, and then you can go to appearance and change the font. Well, this font here will not change the code font. It will change the size of this UI, for example, or the UI in general in your Android Studio. I'm going to keep that at 18 because I believe that's just big enough for you to follow. But now, if you want to change another font, you can just search for fonts here. 
and then go to editor font and here you can change the size. So if you were to make it bigger, you would select a bigger value here. If you want to make it smaller, you would select a smaller value here. So I believe going with 20 is going to be fine for you. So this is going to be the size that we're going to use here. Now you can see that it has now let's have a very quick overview of what's going on here. So on the left hand side, we have a bunch of buttons that we can click on and these are tabs. So when I click on this, you can see that this closes. It's the project tab, which allows me to see all of the project files. And here I can go to different settings, which will also change the way those files are displayed. So if I go to project, you can see that suddenly things look very differently. And I would recommend to always keep it at Android because that's how I'm going to use it and it will make it easier for you to follow along. So you can see there are a bunch of files, right? And most of them will not be relevant for us at the beginning, but we're going to go through them step by step and I'm going to explain what they do. Now, the most important file for us is going to be this main activity right here. And it's this file that is already opened. And you can see once I click on it, well, it opens up this screen. It was open already. So let's go to another file. Let's go to this for file, for example, and now click on main activity and you see it jumps over here. So this is going to be the starting point of our application where everything starts. Now, at the same time, you see that there was a different file opened up for me as well. It's called the activity underscore main dot XML file. So this is the XML file which takes care of the user interface. So let me drag this around a little bit. You can see there are many different options here what you can drag and change the appearance. So let me zoom in a little bit. And you can see that this is basically going to be the UI of my application. So currently the only thing that it has is this little text that says hello world. And I can click on it and then I can see the attributes here on the right hand side and make changes to it. But we're not going to do that for now. Now, the important part is that you see that there is a little editor which allows you to add the UI and the main activity and the activity underscore main XML, they are connected, which basically means that this main activity uses this activity main XML as its appearance, so to speak, as its user interface file. Because here we are setting the content view. So we're saying the content in the view, which means on the screen, should use this file called activity underscore main, which is this XML file right here. Now, this activity main XML file, by the way, is inside of this res here. So in the Java folder, that's where our programming code goes. And inside of the res folder, that's where our resources go. And there are drawables, which are images, so for example, this green image, as well as this little robot, these two are images, which in fact are vectors that then create this image. And then we have the layouts in which we have our activity main XML file, which is this file here, which we're going to adjust accordingly in order to make our app look differently. So this is just for you to know where files are. The Gradle scripts, we're going to look at that a lot later because we're not going to touch that anytime soon. All right, but well, that's it for this video. In the next one, we're going to set up the emulator.